Hello and welcome back to Investment Vitals. The link for filing your tax detail is now open in the FTX US portal. Now, giving your tax detail is a very important step in for getting your money back in the ongoing FTX claim case. In today's video, I will be showing you step by step how I am filing my tax details on the portal. And I hope that is of, of help to some of you. Before I proceed, nothing contained in this video is legal or financial advice. This is only merely how I am filing my taxes, uh, my details on the portal. With that out of the way, let's move to the video. However, before proceeding, one small piece of information. I have recently joined on Binance Copy Portal as a lead trader. In the, in the last week, I joined the, as a lead trader and in the last eight days, I have generated a return of 100% in the futures market with a maximum leverage of up to 20, 20 times, which implies an aggregate return of around 5,000, an annualized return of around 5,200% with a success rate of approximately 70%. Also, on the spot portal of the copy trade of Binance, I have generated a return of upwards of 20% in the first week, which implies a return of around 5,200% annualized with zero leverage. If you find the performance useful, I would encourage you to copy me on Binance portal. It will also be an encouragement and a support to this channel. I will leave a link to my profile in the comment section. Also, you can find me. Alternatively, you can find me on Binance by searching investment vitals in the copy trade section. Now, with that out of the way, uh, let me move quickly with the content of today's video. Some of you would have received this email uh, in which uh, FTX has given a link where you can file your tax detail. Now, it is the same link in which uh, as uh, the one in which you had filed your claim earlier. That is claims.ftx.com. But be very careful of the link you go to. The email you would have received would be something similar to this. Be very careful that it should have originated from support at ftx.com. And the link that you are going to is claims.ftx.com. It is you can either click on this, but better I would suggest you can rather type it out in, the, in your browser. Once you type it out and go through the login process, you will arrive at the screen as you can see on my screen currently. Now, most of you would have done step one to six by now and hence know the process of logging in. However, if you want to see the process of logging in also, you can check in any of the other step by step videos that I had made earlier as to how to log in. It's a very simple process. Once you have logged in, in this screen, ideally all your step one to six should be in green check and step number seven should be on your screen once you have logged in. As you click on generate your tax tax form, the screen that will open in front of you would be this, in which they would they would let you decide as in help you to figure out which form is relevant for you. I will just quickly run through the FAQ that has been given. Uh, the FAQ is also mentioned is mentioned here on the screen that is tax requirement that FTX. When you click on this, uh, it opens the screen which is this. You can read through it, but I will quickly run through the uh, the portion that uh, I feel is very relevant. However, I encourage you to go through it in entirety. The more important section is which type of form you are going to fill. They have specified that if you are an individual and a US tax resident, you will have to form, uh, file form W9. If you are an individual and a non-US tax resident, the applicable form is W8BEN. Now, those most of you would have already filed W8BEN at the time of opening different accounts and you would be aware of it. However, it is good to read through all this information before you do the filing process. Most people watching this video would be individuals and I won't even touch upon the other segments given here. However, you should read through it before you file your own taxes. Now, let me without that out with that out of the way, I'll move through my process here. Uh, in my case, it says the first uh, question is essentially if you're a tax resident, you can read through it. A US tax resident is either a US citizen or a US green card holder. That is a permanent resident individual who meets substantial presence test. You can click on the link here to figure out what it mean, implies. What is a substantial presence test or a legal entity incorporated or has a which has a primary business in US. None of these apply to me. I'll click no and proceed to the next page. The next portion also talks about our, what kind of a, uh, entity are you are an individual or a company so on and so forth. For most people watching this video, it's going to be individual. It is individual. In my case, I'm filing for an individual. So I click individual to proceed to the next page. This brings me to the page in which they would uh, populate in which you have uh, to populate your own detail. Some of it is pre-populated based on what you had uh, information here that you had given earlier. I will be hiding the ones that are that are confidential for me. However, the first uh, screen uh, says the opening part of the screen shows your name, your date of birth and your country of citizenship. 
Now, uh, in terms of people who have more than one citizenship, dual citizenship, for example, in that case, the the question the, the, there's a help section given question mark right next to the uh, column. Click on that and it will give you a description of what you have to do. It says that if you have more than one citizenship, then you have to file uh, in this the citizenship that is in which you have been most uh, recently available. The next column is US Social Security. In my case, it is not applicable because I'm not a US resident taxpayer, a tax uh, resident. The third column is if a foreign tax identification number FTIN. In many countries, there is a tax identification number. For example, in India, there is PAN that is permanent account number. In many other countries, there is also concept of TIN tax identification number. Check, uh, fill in what is whatever is relevant for you. In my case, I will be filling in uh, the, the TIN number that is relevant for me. That is the tax number, whatever it is uh, relevant for me. If you don't have a tax uh, FTIN legally, uh, if there's no requirement for a FTIN in your jurisdiction, there's an option of clicking the checking uh, the tick box here, uh, and you can check tick it off, and the uh, the enabling form will be disabled. Fill it uh, whatever is relevant for you. Then you have to populate your permanent address. Uh, be very careful that uh, I would suggest it is important to fill in the right detail in here. It is likely, or it's not likely, but it is. There's zero, there is some possibility of some people receiving a check. Now, although in the previous discussions, uh, FTX has mostly been saying that they will be trying to make payments through digital means, but one never knows for sure. And hence, in case there's a probability of somebody receiving a check, it is important that you fill in the right details in terms of address. Now, there are two different columns. Uh, the starting column is permanent resident uh, a, a residence address. For most people, it will actually be the ed com communication address as well populate a detail your uh, the house number or whatever it is uh, the city the state of provenance and the pin code and the country these columns have to be filled in also some people might have a different mailing address other than uh, address being different from your permanent address in my case i will be filling the permanent address that is given in my identification document for example a passport it would typically carry your permanent address as well and sometimes also your communication address I would uh, I would be populating the address that is in my in my KYC documents, and I will also be populating the mailing address so that if in case there's something be received over email, I get it through that. So suppose you have to fill in your uh, separate mailing address, you can check check uh, click this box and populate the details here. Your mailing address that is your house number or street number or V number or whatever is relevant for you, the city, uh, the province or the state, the pin code or zip code whatever is relevant and country name. Below this is the details for US address, which is not relevant in my case. So I'll be skipping through this. And towards the end of the screen, we have the option of, uh, are you a owner of a disregarded entity whose name is on the account to which the payment is made? Now, this is mo mostly not relevant for uh, individual tax filing. I would not, not be checking it. However, uh, the, the, the site is very useful, uh, very user friendly. They have given question marks or help section at, at, at the end of your question. You can click on this and you can read through it. Uh, when you click it, it will give you, it will open you the details. Uh, this one is actually relevant for people. Uh, uh, additional information for WBN about a business entity, which is in my case not relevant. I'll not be checking this. I'll not be clicking tick on this one. Uh, the next tick box is: Are you a tax resident of a country which has an income tax treaty with the United States? Again, you can click on the uh, on the help section here, and it will give you a list, a link of IRS website. If you click on this. Uh, you will land on the, this this website in which they have given the list of uh, uh, of tax jurisdiction that have a, a treaty with US. You can run through the list. For example, if you are from Canada, you'll be taking uh, taking that yes. Or if you are from say Georgia, you'll be taking yes over there. So on and so forth. India, for example, is in in this list. Uh, if you are from India, uh, if you are a tax resident of India, you can click that. So on and so forth. Run through the country that is relevant for you. And if it is, if you believe that uh, uh, your country has tax residence, you might you might take it here. Uh, I will be filling as as per my uh, my requirement. And the last part is I acknowledge that I'm a resident in FATA, if FATCA uh, uh, partners jurisdiction. FATCA is a is a is a tax treaty. Most countries will actually be uh, FATF partners. However, of course, depends on what your form says or what your applicability in your case is. In my case, it is FATF. Uh, uh, I'll be clicking this checkbox and proceeding with the next. Um, well, I have filled up my details elsewhere parallelly and I will be proceeding with that separately. Um, yes, uh, I will be proceeding it here now. And that will eventually bring you to this screen. Uh, I've, I've hidden the portion on top that includes my personal details uh, in which uh, it is essentially the form that you are eventually going to submit. 
uh, when you scroll down below there are certain things that you have to confirm through checkboxes i will quickly read through them it says under penalties of perjury uh, i declare that i have examined the information on this form and to the best of my knowledge and belief it is true correct and complete i further certify under penalties of perjury that first i am the individual that is beneficial owner or am authorized to sign for the individual that is the beneficial owner of all the income or proceeds to which this form relates or am using this form to document myself for chapter 4 purposes essentially speaking in my case uh, this this i am the beneficial owner uh, is what i am certifying in here second it says the person named in line number one of this form is not a us person as i mentioned uh, this form we that we are filling right now i am filing as a person who is a non uh, us tax resident so i am taking this box from that purpose the third dialog box is this form relates to one a that is income is not effectively connected with the conduct of trade or business in us united states income effectively connected with the uh, with conduct of trade or business in united states but is not subject to tax under applicable applicable income tax treaty uh, the partners share or of a proprietorship firm effectively connected taxable income or partners amount relies from transfer of partnership interest subject to withholding under section 1446f essentially implying that uh, the person filling this form is not really a tax resident in my case uh, I, it is correct so i am taking this form third uh, the next tick box is the person named in li on line number one uh, of this form is a resident of the of the treaty country listed on line number nine of the form uh, within the meaning of income tax treaty between us and that country in my case it is true i'm taking this for broker for broker transactions or barter exchange the beneficial owner is an exempt foreign person as defined in the instructions furthermore i authorize this form to be to prove to be provided to any withholding agent that has control receipt or custody of income of which i am the beneficial owner or any withholding agent that can disperse or make payment of income tax of which i am the beneficial owner i agree that i will submit a new form within 30 days if the certificate made on this form becomes incorrect now you have to read through this uh, and see if you're taking what you're taking on is applicable in your, in your case in my case uh, this is applicable so i'm picking it uh, I certify that I have the capacity to sign for the person identified in line one of this case. So if somebody else is filing on your behalf, then you are certifying that you are uh, you have the right to sign on behalf of that person. The next portion is the the internal revenue uh, revenue services do not require your consent to prove uh, 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 consent to any provision of this document other than the certifications required to establish your status as a non-US individual and if applicable obtain a reduced rate of withholding after this you have to uh, you have to type in your name which could be let's say this case investment vitals and uh, print the name of signature again investment vitals for example i'm just quoting so on so forth now uh, of course you'll be filling in your uh, real name um, and uh, uh, whatever is applicable in your case i will quickly populate this the real version of it and uh, and then we'll proceed forward signature of the beneficial owner or the individual authorized to sign this form uh, if you want you can read through this also it says here please type in your type your name in the signature box to make declaration contained in the in the uh, penalties of perjury statement and electronic sign your form if you want you can quickly run through the the, uh, the declarations that we are given in here quickly uh, first i am the individual that is the beneficial owner that is true the person named on form on line number one of this form is not a us person that is true this form relates to income not connected with us essentially income uh, effectively connected to the conduct in uh, relates to income not effectively in us income effectively connected with trade or conduct trade or business in us but not subject to tax that is fine uh, partners share uh, there's no partner in this case the partners uh, the partner's amount realized from the uh, transfer of partnership interest subject to the Durlin tax. Again, uh, that's, uh, that's fine. I can take this. Uh, uh, the next point is the person named on line number one of the form. Uh, that's fine. Broker for broker transactions or barter exchange, the beneficial owner is an exempt foreign person. That is fine. 
uh, I believe if we uh, uh, so uh, this all looks okay. I'll be filling in uh, the name, signing in the name to proceed with this form. And then we can click next to proceed. Now let's see if we if we uncheck any of the boxes, you can see that you are not able to proceed. Essentially implying that you have to practically be ticking all the boxes to be eligible as a non-US tax resident in individual capacity. So I filled up the form. I am uh, clicking next to proceed to the next screen. And with that, yes, it comes across uh, for the electronic consent. It says, do you consent to the delivery of certain tax documents respective? Uh, to your uh, uh, FTX account is electronically described here under uh, a lot of stuff a lot of text is written here you can read through it I probably will be reading a little later but I don't think we have an option of saying I do not consent here uh, I am clicking clicking consent here I believe there's an option of coming back and changing your uh, your tax documents later on also I presume I've not verified that still but uh, for the purpose of this video I am going ahead and clicking uh, I consent uh, with that it says submitting your form and now you will be taken to claims.ftx.com where you can uh, return to the tax portal at any time when i click ok it will take me to uh, the uh, claims.ftx portal uh, ftx.com portal and uh, yes it uh, and i can see it says in progress now why is it says in progress is because uh, while uh, we have submitted the form it is subject to being uh, reviewed internally that's what i believe it is i will come back in a few days and check if it is uh, the status shows completed uh, but i believe that should be good enough for uh, for the step-by-step -step video that we have discussed today i hope you found the video useful if you have any comment queries uh, etc do mention in the comment section and uh, i hope that people will be contributing to responses to help each other um, as i discussed at the beginning of the video uh, i have joined a binance copy trade as a as a trader uh, last week and in a week I have generated more than 100% return if you I will be sharing link to my profile uh, in, in the pen section if you find my performance satisfactory uh, do copy me on Binance it will be also be an encouragement for me uh, you can also find me on Binance copy trade by searching investment on vitals uh, I hope you like the video if you do hit the like button and share with you with people who might benefit out of it and I'll see you in the next video see you. Bye.